Hello everyone, Trophy100, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a quick video because many times people say, well, Trophy, your channel is too complicated. You're not there for beginners. So I do focus on the Trophy Wines. And again, there's a lot of other channels, YouTube channels out there that are great that kind of focus more on beginner um, entry level wines, value wines, and beginner concepts. But um, I do want to give you a couple of tips for beginners on how to kind of up your wine game or to be a little bit more uh, in the know. So the first mistake that I see a lot of people do is how they hold their glass. And I'm really surprised how many people, in fact, that are wine drinkers still do this quite often. Um, so the proper way to hold a glass is by its stem, like here. And I see a lot of people grab a glass like here or grab a glass underneath like this. And so um, th there's a two reasons why you don't do this. First, whenever you grab a glass or touch a, the, the body of a, uh, of a wine glass, um, you probably will put some marks on it and that may affect how when you're looking at the um, color of a uh, wine that may affect it. So for instance, if you've got fingerprints or you've got something, you may actually think the wine is cloudy. It's not cloudy, it's because your fingerprints are there, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing that generally when you do a cup of glass like this is that you warm it. And so that's particularly bad for white wines. The second thing I find that many people don't do is they actually don't put the wine in their mouth for long enough. Uh, the surface area of the tongue has got receptors everywhere and there's different receptors in different parts of the tongue. When you drink a glass of wine or take a sip of wine, you need to do two things. One, you need to swirl it in your mouth. You don't need to make that aeration sound if you think it's gross, but at least get every part of your mouth, um, the wine to every part of the mouth. And second thing is that you should have it in your mouth for a minimum of three seconds because it takes time for the receptors in your in your taste buds to process that. So that's why when you have like bad medicine or bitterness, you just kind of tell people tell you just gulp it because you can't taste it, right? So I think that's something that I find a lot of people do. They actually drink and they just swallow. And honestly, it's unless you're like a super taster, it's almost impossible to get everything out of that wine because um, you're only, if you're just swallowing, you're actually only hitting the, the center part of your tongue. Next tip is swirling the, the wine. So the rationale for swirling a wine is that when you swirl a wine, it aerates the wine and it brings out the aroma. So the swirl is actually very important. So moving your hand like that, that's not really swirling it, right? Um, it has to be quite vigorous. And so what I suggest to people and like, you know, just moving like that, that's not swirling. Um, so in order to get a good swirl, I actually, I'm not a great swirler. So I actually just put it on the table and swirl because I have a base. I know that may not be that professional, but that prevents me from swirling all over the place because that's part of the problem. Sometimes with this glass is quite nice and big, but some glasses are small. So you're thinking if I swirl too hard, it might come out um, and, you know, so they end up not swirling at all. They just kind of move like micro movements, which is really not swirling at all. That's not going to do anything. Um, generally speaking, uh, people pour to a too high a level on a glass. In general, what I like to see is actually um, lower than maybe two fifths of a glass. So for this glass, I would pour up to here. And the rationale is again, twofold. One is you want to have the wine sitting at the widest base of the glass and that's generally in the middle or in the uh, under the middle so that you have the highest surface area uh, for the for the aeration for air to um, interact with the wine and two you just don't want it to be so high that you can't swirl the wine uh, it's not just a one-time thing you know i just swirl once and i'm good to go no that's not how it goes um, the more you swirl the more i think you oxygenate oxygenate the wine and I think that does bring out the aroma. So uh, that's a good thing to do. Next thing I talk about is um, um, handling of bottles. When you uh, go to any event or when you, um, you know, even at a restaurant, 
normally the the waiter or the sommelier will be handling the ball for you. There's really no reason for you to be able to handle the ball. And I find people handle bottles way too much. Or I bring a wine. The first thing someone does is grab the bottle, right? And looks at it like this. Sometimes they'll turn it. That's probably the worst thing you can do with, for a bottle, particularly if it's an old bottle or if it's a burgundy. Um, you've just disturbed it. You know, you doing this to a wine just warms the wine and it really does nothing for your understanding of the wine. Um, even if you want to take a picture, generally speaking, you don't have to touch the wine. And generally speaking, wines do better the less they are being handled. Someone who's had a wine in their cellar for 10 years brings up a pristine dinner, you know, excited about it. And then all of a sudden, 10 people pick it up. Hey, look at this. This is great. Like, and, uh, you know, look at it like this. You've just disturbed the wine that was basically in pristine condition for 10 years. So um, generally speaking, um, you know, if you don't have to, don't handle the lines. Last tip, which I've said to before to beginners, which is really important, whenever you drink a wine, whether it be by the glass, take a picture of the bottle so that you know what wine you drank. Um, it is, from my perspective, totally useless to drink a wine if you don't know what it is. If you were drinking a soft drink, right? Or a cocktail. And basically you just ask someone to bring you a cocktail, but you didn't ask them what the ingredients are. You didn't ask them the name. You just say, hey, just bring me whatever. That's what a lot of people do. They say, hey, I want a Pinot Grigio. Or I want a Merlot. They have no idea where it's from, what it's, what label is. So even if you enjoyed it, just didn't enjoy it, you have no idea how to uh, uh, get that wine again. And that's what I find a lot with people. They'll say to me, I love this wine, but I forgot what it's called. And that's the first thing I ask them. When they say, oh, I love this wine. I say, well, what was it? Like, do you have a picture? It's like, no, I forgot. And then they don't know what it is. So that's really um, a key when I find a lot of people just take a picture because a lot of times you're busy, you might be having a great time, but then you go home and say, oh, I've got that picture or I can take a note of that picture. At least you know what it is. And so that's what I find a lot of beginners, they actually waste a lot of their wine opportunities. And I did this when I'm a beginner. I drank a wine, I drank a glass of wine, thinking, well, it's kind of silly. I don't want to ask the person. I don't want to be too snobby. But just ask the sommelier or the waitress, hey, do you mind um, bringing over the bottle or uh, let me know what it is? Um, there's two reasons for that. One, you can get the bottle, but secondly, there's a recognition of the bottle because part of the idea of a bottle is really um, the, the actual presentation of it because that will help you to remember it. That will also tell you, you know, if you that wine is attractive to you. It's like, a really, wow, this is a really nice bottle of wine. It's a great label or it's, wow, that's a terrible label. I can't serve that to friends. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy drinking.